Thank you for staying with us. Time now to serve you the news review. We're joined by political scientist and director for the Center for European Studies at the University of Ghana, Dr. Kwame Asasanti. Doc, a very good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Ben. It's How really you, good sir? to have you. Welcome to Wednesday. I hope you're doing well. I'm fine. I'm very fine. Great. Uh, we'll be getting into the papers uh, shortly, but I just want to take your quick thoughts again on how you've been, what your economic situation has been like, and some of the stories that you've seen over the last uh, week. Uh, for example, we had the motion of censure uh, ad hoc committee meeting in Parliament. Uh, they, they are yet to produce their report. We don't know whether it will go to plenary, but in the midst of all of that, we're going to have the finance minister tomorrow likely present the budget. We'll be getting into that in, in the later stories. But anything you'd like to quickly reflect on? Oh, and this morning as well, the story of a soldier who apparently to disperse a crowd uh, was firing in the air and when he was lowering the weapon, apparently one of the, 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 the bullets hit a woman and, and her baby also affected, who, who is now dead. The family is calling for some uh, relief and, and for the authorities to prevent similar happenings. How do you relate to all of this? Any, any quick reactions before we get into the papers? Yeah, I want to look at the Lessinger the motion, the committee that was set up. Uh, if you follow the exercise, um, the, the committee was okay uh, in terms of the composition uh, through reflection of, you know, leaders who are supposed to lead that committee. Take, for instance, uh, Mr. Katie Amon and then Dr. Aini. They, you know, acquitted themselves very well as leaders managed the process to its logical conclusion, uh, prevented certain questions which were not uh, necessary and were not, uh, you know, part of uh, the rules of the game. Uh, they themselves occasionally were coming with barrage of questions that really uh, were very good. Uh, you saw the committee members also, uh, in terms of their questioning, uh, were very much okay. Uh, except that sometimes you realize that tempers were so high, uh, but they were able to manage. Uh, for me, as a student of democracy, what gladdened my heart was the fact that the minister was given ample opportunity uh, to represent, uh, to be represented there by his council, and then he himself also had opportunity to speak at length about the issues that they put uh, to him. Uh, we got a whole lot of them, and uh, for me, um, I am fine with regard to what I saw. Um, I am waiting for uh, the committee to file their report, and uh, after a discussion has been uh, taken on it in Parliament, then I'll come in and then give my assessment of what the minister said and what I think. But I think that so far... Um, I followed the process and it was nothing but a true reflection of what it ought to be. If you look at the, the ladies, uh, the, the incident that we had on our hand uh, just um, a few days ago with regard to the shooting of the, 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 the woman and the child, very unfortunate. Um, sometimes we ask that why is it that we are getting some of these issues Yes, they are not always the case, but once a while they occur. But why do we have them? Um, it goes to the fact that sometimes we want our institutions. I know that from time to time they give them opportunity to be trained and retrained and all that. We want the institutions to up their game on that so that our soldiers, our security men uh, will be uh, very much on top of their issues because this type of uh, incidents, uh, when they continue, they don't create uh, confidence in the system and they create all manner of problems uh, for society. It's my hope and prayer that um, the authorities uh, will take keen interest in this and then help us to address them uh, in the future and prevent its future occurrence. That is what I can say for now. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts on those matters. Let's get into some other crucial matters of national scope. Ahead of 2023 economic policy tomorrow, and I'm starting with a daily graphic. Budget to restore stability. VAT 
likely to go up. And um, hmm. anyway, let's get into uh, the, the crux of it. The Minister of Finance, Kendo Foriata, is expected to present the 2023 budget statement and economic policy of the government to Parliament tomorrow. The majority chief whip, uh, Frank Anodompe, told Parliament last Friday and urged members of the House to be present. The budget from our sources is expected to inspire hope, restore macroeconomic stability, bolster re resilience, achieve inclusive growth, and ensure value addition to the country's raw materials in order to rake in more revenue and foreign exchange to contain the current economic challenges. Our sources have also hinted of an upward adju adjustment in the value-added tax that is currently at 12.5% to between 14 and 15%. That would be an increment of about 25 or 1.5 percentage points. Now, uh, the presentation will be done in accordance with Article 1791 of the Constitution, which says the President shall cause to be prepared and laid before Parliament at least one month before the end of the financial year estimates of the revenue and expenditure of the Government of Ghana for the following financial year. Uh, now, given the challenges the economy is facing, which have largely affected revenue performance, the budget is expected to spell out far-reaching policy measures to restore stability and create buffets that will bolster resilience. But there's also talk about expanding the tax net. I will not get into too much of that. Uh, you can, all of you can grab copies of the Daily Graphic and get all the details. But I want you to focus on this. One, the presentation of the budget, and it has been said that no further taxation is supposed to come our way as far as traders, business people, ordinary citizens are concerned. If the VAT is going to be hiked from 12.5 to 14 or 15 percent, that's a 1.5 or 2.5 percentage increment, depending on uh, which, which one it comes to. How do you think people will react? And again, the story itself couches it this way. Members of the House are expected to be present, but there's the threat. Even the majority MPs have said that they may not show up if Ken Oforiata is the one delivering the budget statement. And the minority has also threatened a walkout. There's a quorum needed for the finance minister to be able to deliver the budget statement. If that happens, it would be a first. What then happens? Doc, some, some items for you to reflect on. Yes, if you look at the, the budget and then uh, what it bought for us, it should be a budget that will present hope. It should be a budget that will, you know, address uh, some of the challenges that are so pressing now. For instance, we want to see the budget uh, you know, dilating on uh, how we deal with uh, imports and then uh, the how we manage uh, forests and all that. And of course, uh, how we can also handle our debt situation from now. Uh, I am sure that these things are going to be spelled out in much, much detail in the budget and then we'll all be able to follow. Again, uh, one interesting aspect is the fact that, yes, um, some members of the majority caucus do not want the minister to present the budget. And then the, from what we have heard also from the system, the minister is also poised to present. Um, if that happens, uh, what is the, the consequence? Uh, that is, that, that's going to be a difficulty. A difficulty in the sense that already the group has threatened that if the minister is the one to present the budget, then they are not going to cooperate with the, any business of government in parliament. That presents a difficult situation for government because government, in spite of everything, must run and run effectively. And government needs the members of parliament to be part and parcel of the process throughout. Because for financial bills and all bills, um, you need a quorum in some of these uh, important bills, especially for budget, right. which but, is a but, major but, government but a decision. Quick, a, a quick intervention. The MPs say it's not that he's been, maybe like the minority would say, he's been reckless with managing the economy, yeah. but that people have lost confidence in him. My focus is that that people, the ordinary Ghanaian, has lost confidence in the finance minister. And mind you, these members of parliament are reflecting their constituents and what the people want. So, uh, how, how do you look at this dichotomy? On one end, they should reflect the views of the people. On the other, government business must also run. Yes, it's a difficult one. But you see, because 
of their initial position of coming out to vent their grievance and all that. They must uh, stay, uh, you know, afloat with that decision. Otherwise, their constituents we are not going to uh, regard their decision as very important at all. And then they also must demonstrate to government that they are for government and all that. So that balancing act is the one that is going to be difficult for uh, them. But in all this, uh, I think that uh, the position of the, the caucus, especially those members who want the minister to go, uh, I, for one, do not trust their position at all. Because today they say one thing, tomorrow they say another. Well, it appears we, we have a bit of a hitch in there uh, with the connection to Dr. Asa Asante. Uh, Doc, I see you back. So you were making the point that you, okay. you are not so sure of the stance of the majority, right? Because they keep vaccinating. I am not too sure. Yeah, mm. they keep on changing their position and all that. So I don't know what they are going to tell me to convince me uh, that they are sticking to this position or not. Right. Uh, that's... Uh, present a difficult situation to the people of this country and for their constituents because they don't know what uh, their position finally is. Right. And uh, for me, it also disturbs government business. Mm. If you are not going to, you know, uh, be part of the government process, then life is going to be difficult for government. And that if the budget is thrown out, that is a very difficult situation that government will go through. It's my hope and prayer that we don't get there because that presents a new uh, dynamic to the whole process. And at this time of the day, uh, we don't need uh, such difficulties because we are already hot and times are very hard. Mm. And that also brings us to the point of reflecting on an IMF deal, a likely IMF deal. Without a budget, that could also be problematic. I think it's Dr. Marquez Yabua who has been talking about the fact that if by the 22nd of December, we don't have something. I, I forget whether he was referring to the staff level agreement or an actual deal for an IMF program. Then we could be in dire straits. Only time will tell. But we'll see how we navigate this, this maze, uh, you know, deeply troubling time in our national life. But let's get into other stories, Doc. Sale of Saglemi houses. Committee sits on way forward, but minority against private developers. That story is on page 11 of the Daily Graphic newspaper. I'm still doing the Daily Graphic. And I'm bringing it up because of recent developments. So uh, the Ministry of Works and Housing has constituted a, a technical working committee to guide it in exploring the possibility of selling the Saglemi affordable housing project. The technical working group chaired by the Deputy Minister of Works and Housing, Abdullah Abanga, is made up of experts from the building environment, including professional bodies such as the Institute of Planners, the Ghana Institute of Engineers, and the Ghana Institute of Surveyors, the Public Procurement Authority, the Ministry of Finance, and the La Lands Commission. In an interview with the Daily Graphic ahead of the meeting last Monday, the Minister of Works and Housing, Francis Hassan Subwachi, said the group was, among other things, expected to advise government on procurement processes and other issues relating to the sale of state assets to ensure transparency, accountability, and value for money. He indicated that an assessment later uh, had revealed in 2012, so let's start from there, the government secured a $200 million loan for the construction of 5,000 housing units at Saglemi, a community near Tema in the Greater Accra region. However, the minister said at the end of the stipulated completion for the project, it was found that only 1,506 housing units were at various stages of completion and, quote, not habitable. He indicated that an assessment later revealed that the ministry would need $13 million to connect the uncompleted housing units to potable water and $8 million to connect them to electricity, while $46 million was needed for off-site infrastructure and an additional $68 million for on-site infrastructure. Now, quote again, given the amount spent and the money needed to complete the project, there is no doubt that Saglemi is a failed project. We have asked the Ghana Institute of Surveyors to give us the current valuation of the project so that we know how much it is worth, he said. I have a simple question for uh, the Minister for Works and Housing. If this administration, or let's say the Kufuor administration, had started this 
housing project? Would you be calling it a failed project with all these dynamics that you're bringing to bear? I feel sometimes we shoot ourselves in the foot. And so, um, in so much, I'm, I'm just trying to use the right words and not use words that some people might find unpalatable. But we're so excruciatingly political sometimes with some of these things. I get the financial breakdown, but I'm thinking within this period when there has been some deterioration of, of the facility, something could have been done. And now it raises questions, just as with other affordable housing projects that are never affordable in the first place, about whether this, what the minority is suggesting, that some entities just want to make this look like a very bad deal and then sell it off to family and friends, whether there is something in the works. It may not be family and friends, but it may be people like we've seen in South Africa who have close ties to those in government. What is it? And how come every project of this nature is mired in some conflict, whether it is NPP done or NDC done? Why? In the meantime, the ordinary Ghanaian in this time has fallen into poverty. So many, over a million people, World Bank data, Ghana Statistical Service data, have slipped into poverty. This would do a lot of good to the person in the public sector, especially those working for the state. Yet here we are, and of course, now there are calls that look, if you're a private developer and you take on this bit, should an NDC government come to power, you're going to lose because they are not going to you know, pursue that. It, it, it raises quite a storm of unnecessary you know, political turmoil. And in the end, who loses? The taxpayer, the ordinary taxpayer eking out a living. Sometimes when we talk, people feel, you know, we are, but some of these things make no sense. So when we took over, we had to wait till things deteriorated to this point, assuming the figures that are being quoted are correct. Oh, Mother Ghana. Um, Dr. Asasante, I think you've heard me ranting, sharing my thoughts. Sometimes I just wonder what sort of country we're in and what sort of people are thinking for us. But your quick thoughts on the Saglemi issue and where it has come to. Any thoughts? Um, very unfortunate we are here. Uh, one would have thought that this issue would have been dealt on head on. But we are where we are because of uh, this lingering challenge. Um, I have heard that government want to sell the property and all that. And if you hear the, uh, the, 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 the talk about it from the NDC quarters, it uh, doesn't bode well for um, such um, an enterprise. Um, I hope and pray that the state will be able to find lasting solution to this. And then we will prevent, my, my, my interest is that I want a situation where we will always enforce the provisions of the constitution, which says that if a government starts in a project, the next government must ensure value for money and then continue from where the previous government left off. Uh, if we are going rigidly by this, I'm not sure we'll be where we are. That, take, that tells us that uh, we more often than not, we don't handle or we don't adhere to the provisions of the constitution. And if we want to maintain this democracy and firm it, then we need to what? Be, be, be abreast with the rules of the game and then play it according to uh, the rules. I want government to be able to reflect on these things and then get all the needed support from the stakeholders and then take a decision that will really help us to ensure value for money. We have pumped so much as a state into this project and we need to ensure full benefit of it. Well, uh, let's quickly take a look at this opinion piece on page 10 and wrap with the Daily Graphic with sports. Uh, there is the question, who needs Anas? Of course, we're talking about Anas, Arimeyo Anas. It's a piece by... Um, Elizabeth Ohene, we all uh, know her, and she's shared some thoughts on Anas Arimeyo Anas in recent times on the back of Galamse economy. And she writes, the whole point of Anas in our lives, and I mean in public life, is to have someone to keep us honest. We start from the premise that those in public office will steal if they are not being watched, and the money they steal belongs to all of us, and it is money. 
that would otherwise have been used for public good. She goes on and on and says, I have two problems with this theory. I do not think you can successfully separate, uh, separate private stealing from public theft. Those who steal private sector money invariably steal when they have a chance to get near public sector money. The private sector is said to constitute more than 85% of our economy. If we reserve our outrage only for stealing in the public sector and accept or wink over the stealing in the private sector, Ghana will never work. Well, I agree with her to a certain extent. Uh, stealing, whether public or private, that's why in other jurisdictions, public or private, your actions could affect the general economy. And when you're nabbed, I mean, the consequences are the same. But definitely, in our developing world, in a place like ours, where there is a lot of public sector looting, like we've seen it, of our political elements, we must go on this trajectory to safeguard the public purse. Private enterprise in this country, I mean, let's let, a focus on the public sector. I agree. And again, Madam Ohene, I know you've served with uh, government in, government out. Do we need an ass? Do we need people, investigative journalists? Sure, we do. Like our own in-house investigative journalism that has exposed things on Galamse, cocoa, uh, fertilizer, so many things. They wouldn't have come up without such investigative pieces. And in any case, the president now, before he came to power, said we needed the ANAS principle. I don't see what has changed. Your quick reflections on that as we move to sports and rapid yes. daily graphic. It is a very thorny subject. Over the years, we have not done well as a state in the fight. I'm talking about the fight against corruption. We pay lip service to corruption. Government in, government out. Uh, we end up coming out with slogans, get shares that do not address anything. The rules of the game, we throw them away, and people who are caught in it, once they come from within, from various political parties, and those parties are in government, obviously, they are not going to be touched. And that has allowed the, prog uh, the problem to fester, and today we are where we are. Going forward, a signatory to the uh, good governance agenda and uh, better management or governance processes, we need to set up as a state and make sure that we are putting all our resources together to fight this kanker. You and I are aware of, you know, the money we lose to corruption every year. It's very huge. If we are able to manage this, there is no point we go into IMF World Bank and then demand uh, resources from other donor agencies. It is one of the things that we have failed as a state to address. Um, we also, as a society or as a people who have the power to change leaders from time to time, we have glorified leaders and we have not punished them enough so that this problem, they will also see it as something that we abhor and we don't want its recurrence in our political uh, plane. We have always, you know, treated them lightly and then go to get, you know, um, monetary or financial assistance from them without necessarily subject them, them to certain scrutiny that has something to do with issue of corruption. We have taken it lightly as a state. If you look at even asset declaration, right. it speaks volume that we are not ready to fight the battle. I hope, I hope that this time around, we will do the needful by ensuring that when the opportunity comes for us to renew the mandate and bring in people into government, we will use corruption as a barometer to gauge those who have been in power before, whether this one or previous ones, and see whether uh, they were fall, uh, they were victims of corruption or they, they fall foul of corruption. And then we use that to get them and maintain them or throw them away. Once we as a citizenry, we take that responsibility up, government will set up and all players within the political game will also set up. Let's quickly wrap with sports and teamwork. Key to Black Star's victory, uh, Dennis Odoy uh, says. Uh, so there's also Saudi Arabia shock Argentina yesterday, uh, giving them quite a, a bit of a hectic time and eventually scraping through beating the Argentines by two goals to one. Uh, we also saw Australia take the lead against France, but in the end, suffer a thumping of four goals to one. One. Well, let's quickly get into the Ghanaian Times. Doc, we have just about some eight minutes uh, to wrap. 
Stay off Saglemi Housing Project Minority Warns. MNOs block SIM cards in compliance with Communications Ministry Directive. I'll take a quick look at that story. There's also growing terror threat in West Africa. Let's adopt an agenda to stop it. President tasks echo as security chiefs. I'm not going to belabor the point because this is a discussion we've already been having, which you can take a stab at. And 14 arrested over murder of chief two others at Bore Ahinfie. But let me do the story on page 17. MNOs blocking SIM cards. So, mobile network operators in the country have commenced the blocking of partially registered SIM cards from accessing data services the National Communications Authority has revealed. According to Mr. Kwame Jan, Deputy Director, Consumer and Corporate Affairs Division of the MCA, the MNOs were undertaking the exercise in batches. The move followed a directive by the Ministry of Communications and Digitalization to all MNOs to block SIM cards, also known as subscriber identity modules, which was yet to be fully registered by November 20 from accessing data services. Your quick take on that and maybe the president's call uh, for an agenda to stop the growing terror threat in West Africa, Doc. Yes, I'll start with the SIM card registration and matters arising from this. Mm. Um, we are giving opportunity re to register our cards. Uh, those who have not done so, uh, another registration came past and all that. Extension we're giving and up to date, people have not registered. Uh, I think that uh, we as a people, we must uh, respect issue of deadline and then do what is expected of us when we are called upon to do so. Otherwise, it makes decision taking very difficult and then it creates all manner of problems for us. Uh, we know the, the importance of SIM cards and by extension, mobile phone in our lives. So I think that important matters of this nature, we need to handle them with tax and then with all the uh, you know finesse that we need to be able to get our, our business going. Um, so uh, we are in a, a fix as to whether uh, these are uh, deadlines uh, or they are, they are going to um, reverse the situation where they are not going to uh, block their cars and all that. But you ask yourself, now who calls them? Uh, it's a difficult one. We must ponder over it and answer. The issue of we stopping terror in our society, um, it is more than apt the call by the president and that all of us must do our bit to make sure that we don't encourage issue of terrorism within uh, the frontiers of Africa and everywhere, anywhere. Right. Uh, why am I saying that? Issue of terrorism uh, is a difficult one. Uh, terror, terrorists destroy society, they create problem, they cause mayhem and all that. And they don't allow uh, democracy to what exist. We all have to what? Uh, be behind our security forces, support our government to root out these uh, evil elements from our society if we want to get our democracy on course. Okay. Let's get into some quick stories. I'll, I'll focus on three of them in a minute. You can respond to them. Daily Guide, 2023 budget statement. Let's show leadership candidate Japan to me uh, members of parliament. There's also foreign ministry unaware of EC's planned registration and council of state not fit for purpose, according to former president Kufour. I'll be telling you more about that. Let's, let's quickly go to the stories. The member of parliament for Asin Central, Kennedy Japong, has appealed to the majority caucus to show good leadership by turning up in their numbers tomorrow to support the 2023 budget statement presentation by the Minister of Finance, Ken Oforiata. Of course, there are others who disagree with him. That's the first story. The second story, Council of State not fit for purpose. And former President John Ejekum Kufour has described the office of the Council of State as, quote, not fit for purpose, considering the development trajectory of the Ghanaian society, particularly its quest to deepen democracy. He goes further. According to him, the country should create a second chamber as practiced in other jurisdictions and should comprise of diverse groups of individuals with diverse experience to help stabilize the nation for progress. That is what uh, he suggests. And finally, Foreign Ministry unaware of EC's planned registration. Now, Deputy Minister for Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration, Thomas Mbomba, says the ministry has not received any official notification from the Electoral Commission pertaining to a planned registration of Ghanaians abroad for purposes of their participation in the 2024 general election, which is rather curious. Quick reactions to these three stories. 
Yeah, I will start with President Kufo's call. Right. Yes. Uh, if you look at what he's saying, that uh, we don't need uh, the, the, the Council Act uh, in its uh, stage now, but what we need is a second chamber. I uh, support that call, the call for a second chamber. Because if you look at the work that that council is supposed to do, it should serve as an advisory body. Let us remember that when you have advisory body, all that they can give is advice, and the advice is not binding on government. But if you look at the caliber of people that we have in this, I have said on this program that we need to uh, make effective use of this body, then we need to what, make them what, uh, second chamber. So I support that call because there are a lot of people who are, you know, it's, this is a very a council of very good human resource that in all standards, they qualify to be a second chamber. Why are we uh, making it as an advisory body where the advice president can reject or can accept them? We want them to be part of a decision making that will stand the test of time. That right. means that they can be part of the legislative process. And that is good. As to uh, whether we'll be able to finance that process is another thing. But for me, the call to make them what? A second chamber uh, is apt. Is apt. Let me look at about issue of the EC's process of registering people abroad, which has not come to the notice of uh, Minister of Finance. Oh, sorry, Minister of Foreign Affairs. It is unfortunate that they don't know anything about this. Uh, an important exercise such as getting uh, Ghanaians outside this country registered for an election is crucial if you want to uh, maintain uh, the, 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 our position on having everybody to be part of the process of election, especially those who are qualified to do so. And this request uh, of allowing Ghanaians outside the country to vote is in line with the ROPA, Representation of People, um, um, People's Acts, you know. And uh, I think that if government, uh, and by extension, Electoral Commission want to implement this, they will need to get all the stakeholders together, especially Ministry of what, Foreign Affairs, so that we'll be able to get uh, our acts together. This, right. I think, is unfortunate. Uh, Electoral Commission must take steps to address it quickly as possible if they want to extend, uh, you know, voting to those outside the jurisdiction. The third one, I think the issue of um, Kennedy Japan mm. uh, asking his colleagues to support the budget. And he's, uh, he's, he's, he's not alone. Not he, he's not yeah. alone. In other stories, uh, I think the custodian cover, covers that this morning. Kojopon Kroma, the Minister of Information, also doing yes. same. Quick reactions. Yeah, it is not enough for people to make that call. The real problem must be addressed. What has brought us this far is what they must address their minds to. If they have anything, they must uh, get closer to those MPs and then have these things addressed. Otherwise, the call, yes, you will make, but it's one thing making the call. It's another, the people to heed to the call. Right. And now where we are, we are at the crossroad, and all that they need is tax, and then they need a strategy, and they need to have what? A sober reflection that they will be able to communicate something meaningful to the people. Otherwise, okay. the decision that will come uh, can surprise all of us because they keep on changing their position. Right. Uh, let me quickly do some stories from four newspapers, but there are only two stories I'd like you to react to. Let me do the Daily Dispatch. I am not working for Chema Ting's uh, presidential bid, Esibe Yabwa, Dr. Esibe Yabwa says so. There's also England's Jude Bellingham praises Ghana's Otoado. And 69% of Ghanaians expect IMF program to restore Ghana's economic stability. And Ghana pays $500 million a year to clear Mahama's doomsod debts. That's according to Ken Oforiata. But uh, the Ghanaian publisher, DVLA, introduces new number plate. That's the major story there, an interesting one. The two stories I want you to react to, though. The finder, excerpts of 2023 budget revealed heavy on property rate, VAT increments, social protection. Failure to pass it will derail much-needed IMF bailout, like I suggested. But the mere fact that there are excerpts, supposed excerpts, and that th there would be then suggesting a leak of the 2023 budget is what I find rather disconcerting. That is the first one. The other one, NDC infighting worsens as Ufusuan Pofo camp attacks Mosquito. How, how do you react to these uh, two stories already? In the NDC, General Mosquito and uh, Ufusuan Pofo seem to be at each other's throats. And then the bit about the leak of, uh, purported leak of some of the contents of the 2023 budget. 
in some 40 seconds, Doc? Yes, if you look at the, the, the feud between uh, Ofusiampofo and, and then General Mosquito, it's unfortunate that these two giants within uh, this party are fighting now. Uh, it is unnecessary. And uh, looking at it, I don't get it. Because I, I ask myself, what is wrong with people contesting one another? And uh, if you hear the conversation, you don't see uh, the head and tail. Uh, I don't get it that uh, there were many, the, 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 uh, the, the party leaders were trying to prevail upon uh, General Mosquito not to contest Ofusi Ampofo and the rest of them. <laughs> Why? Anybody can contest, anybody. Look at President Kufuado, he contested all manner of people. And that is the beauty of democracy. Your right. ability to stand the competition, right. um, you know, speaks volume of you. So uh, that quarrel, that, you know, problem they have is unnecessary. But the leaders must uh, be up right now and then deal with it head on before okay. it gets worse. The second issue is the uh, the issue of... Um, so the leak the, the of the, the 2023 budget, purported leak of okay. the 2023 budget. Yes. Just a few seconds um, it's, it's unfortunate that sometimes we have that uh, type of leak within the forecast system. But hey, as for journalists, once uh, they will take advantage of it, but I believe that uh, matters of this nature, we should be able to handle and handle it with care, especially who, those who possess that information. Uh, today, it is out, but tomorrow, they should be able to do um, something meaningful. Doc, always good having you. We're so grateful for your time and uh, wish you the best of the day and the rest of the week. I wish you well. Thank, Thank you. you so much. That is Dr. Kwame Asasante, political scientist, director for the Center for European Studies at the University of Ghana. Uh, before we get into sports, we all know water is life. I had a good drink this morning. It regulates your body temperature and keeps you alive and kicking. Awake is premium purified water treated through a strict purification process to ensure that every bottle on the market refreshes you better. We have the perfect sizes for all occasions, 330 and 500ml bottles to fit your pockets and bags, 750ml for the heavy drinkers, and 1.5 litres for those who always want more. We have also introduced our special 19-litre jars for offices and homes. Now, all you need to do is stay awake with Awake Purified Drinking Water wherever you go. So come on, grab a bottle of Awake Water and get quality hydration. Awake Purified Drinking Water, one for life. Do remember... For every bottle you purchase, an amount is donated to the National Cardiothoracic Center. It's produced by Casa Preco. For bulk purchases, please call 0262-351-251. This advert is FDA approved. Now, you can buy three months or 12 months of HD Plus subscriptions on your HD Plus decoder this football season and dial star 844 star 8 hash to enter the HD Plus or record double double promo. There are 1,700 rewards to be won, including trips for three uh, couples to Dubai in December, a 65-inch TV, household appliances, among others. The promo is valid from now till the 5th of December 2022, so get on board. Sports is up next, and definitely, uh, we all know that news trickling in. Cristiano Ronaldo, well, Manchester United has parted ways with him, even as he locks horns with the Black Stars uh, tomorrow. And we also know the Glazer family that owns Manchester United is now willing to sell. How will that go? More in sports up next.